Let's start, though, with major developments in Russia's war on Ukraine. Vladimir Putin is poised to announce the annexation of four regions of Ukraine tomorrow. And Prime Minister Justin Trudeau insists Canada is ready to escalate its response. It's unacceptable and uh, the world will continue to condemn it in the strongest terms. As I mentioned, uh, we are going to have stronger sanctions. Uh, those will be announced very soon. The Russian president will reportedly make the annexation formal in a speech tomorrow at the Kremlin. Ukraine is vowing to respond harshly and take back the occupied regions. And Putin's move is certainly drawing condemnation from Western leaders and threats of retaliation. Will it be enough, though, to deter him? Larissa Galadza is Canada's ambassador to Ukraine. She's in Kiev. Hi, Ambassador. Good to have you back on our program. Thanks for having me back, Vashi. I appreciate you making the time. I, I wanted to start off on uh, Russia's announcement coming Friday about annexing uh, parts of Ukraine, a and in particular, how significant you think it is, and if you think it's Putin's response to the setbacks that Russia has incurred in Ukraine over the last month. Thanks. Um, thanks for your interest in this. I think it's a it's a really big event that we have coming up, but we have to see it for what it is, and that is a um, a, a desperate move uh, by uh, by someone who is losing control, and um, and I think that's 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 exactly what's happening. And it's an it's an attempt to assert control. Uh, it is political theater and and drama, and uh, an attempt to control the situation. So, um, so that, that's that's what we expect to see, and we expect to have more of. That's what we've had for 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 a while now. In fact, we've had it for eight years. Um, so uh, here here in Ukraine. So that's that's what we'll expect to see. So, what do you think that then necessitates where a response from a country like Canada or our allies is concerned? If in fact this is uh, the act of a desperate man, you know, leading a war against Ukraine, what should Canada do in response? Uh, stay strong, number one, and that is uh, very much following the lead of the Ukrainians, um, and it's something that we're doing with all of our allies and our closest partners is staying strong, in fact, getting stronger. When uh, Russia annexed Crimea uh, illegally, uh, when it had its sham referendums there, uh, we didn't buy into them for even a second. And since 2015, the uh, the sanctions that have been imposed and the, uh, the costs that have been imposed on Russia have only gotten stronger. The consensus of the international community uh, that Russia needed to be isolated got stronger. And certainly since the 24th of February, that has come along uh, stronger still. And so with whatever happens in the next in the next couple of days, I think the the response of, of the West will be to ex escalate uh, the isolation of Putin and his regime. And I certainly take your point about uh, the last number of years and, and the consensus that the West has right now, especially since February 24th. Um, we spoke yesterday to President Zelensky's top diplomatic advisor, though, who, who kind of was issuing a bit of a warning. Please don't do what you did necessarily in, in 2014 with Crimea, right? Like, uh, sure, it wasn't accepted and it was denounced at the time, but there wasn't a, a sufficient escalation, he felt. Um, and though, yes, there have been sanctions in place, clearly it didn't deter Russia from doing ultimately what it did do this year with its war on Ukraine. So I'm wondering if your sense is, uh, and given your conversations with your counterparts in other countries, and then also your conversations with the federal government here, if that, that, that has changed, like if those lessons have been heated. Yes, and I think that that's why uh, when uh, Russia invaded again on the 24th of February, it wasn't just sanctions. It was a whole lot more uh, weapons and, and more and more and more weapons. And, 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 and countries in, in Europe uh, changed decades long policies on the provision of, of lethal uh, aid to, uh, to, to, to other countries. Uh, that, was a, that was a huge escalation. Yesterday, you see another announcement out of Washington, uh, uh, on a, another 
package of, of, of weapons. Uh, and so, so that is in direct contrast to the, uh, to the, to the, to the reaction that we had in, in, in 2015. Um, but the bottom line is that it is consistently escalating and isolating. Um, and it's not just the losses on the battlefield, I think, that are making uh, Putin uh, desperate. I think it's also um, the economic situation, economic and political isolation that are um, that are, are putting that that, that are that are leading him to this point. He may be desperate. How seriously, though, do you think he should be taken? And I'm asking you because, you know, there's kind of this back and forth about whether or not he's bluffing and how far he would take things. I mean, he's also threatened to use nuclear weapons on Ukraine, right? And there's a whole conversation happening about that, too. I'm just wondering from your perspective how seriously, despite whatever we think of the motivation behind the threats Putin's making, how seriously they should be taken. Let's remember that he has made these these threats uh, veiled and overt for for a long time now, um, but they should always be taken seriously, and that's our that's uh, that's part of our job as well. Um, so we need to uh, hear them. We need to um, consider what the motivation might be, um, but we also need to be realistic that it is a possibility, and we need to be uh, to be watchful and 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 do everything. Thing that we can to make sure that it doesn't become a possibility. Um, the Ukrainians here, I, I feel their concern. It is absolutely a, a preoccupation. Um, so this is something also that, uh, that Canada and, and its allies and partners are, are stepping up to do. And is your sense from the conversations you do have from Ukrainians around you that they feel like this week, for example, with this the sham referendums, the you know sham results of them, and then the annexation, that, that this is almost like Putin going all in on the war? Is that the sense they have? On the, on the sham referendums, I think that they feel very strongly supported uh, by their Western partners and by the strong, uh, proactive uh, denunciation of, of, of this 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 uh, this farce uh, the Ukrainian call a farce. Um, so uh, so they're uh, th that they're they they really don't talk m much about that. They 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 look at what the threats are, um, and uh, and it is it is a preoccupation uh, for them. Uh, is it his end game? They're not talking in those terms. Uh, no, um, but uh, you know what next week will will hold is is. You know, we, we we don't know. Last week threw a lot of new things into the, into the uh, into the environment, into the mix, um, and so everyone is is a little bit on edge here. Part of what Zelensky's diplomatic advisor and his name is Igor Yovka said to us was that this week, as as you just described it, also took, uh, in his view, a diplomatic solution, even though it had already been pretty much off the table, really off the table, and that likely the outcome of the war will. Uh, very much now, given what Putin is doing this week, be decided on the battlefield. Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, I think I think the Ukrainians have been saying that basically since Bucha. You'll recall that in early March there were discussions, there were peace talks or talks, negotiations, talks in in Istanbul, and um, when the horrific. Uh, um, Things were discovered in, in, in Bucha when 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 Kiev Oblast was liberated. Uh, the tortures, um, the inhumane treatment, the uh, the the horrors, there, the alleged the war crimes, and and the rest um, that took negotiations, that took talks off the table. Um, so this maybe just drops them further away from the table. I don't know, but that was that was a real turning point, and there has never been a softening of that position. Okay. Ambassador, I'm out of time. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.